Hey everybody, Bill here from Focus Lab. This is episode three of The Debrief, where we take time to sit down with past partners and speak about the project in ways that do not show up on the case study. So today I'm speaking with two amazing people, Sarah Kennedy Ellis and Sergio Claudio. They were both critical team members in the Marketo rebrand. So we're gonna talk about everything that went into that project, how they found us, um, critical points during the project, and ultimately the fact that they were in the middle of getting acquired by Adobe which we did not know as the agency, as we're not supposed to know, and kind of how all that went down. So enjoy. Well, we're back at it. We're getting the gang back together. Marketo, we're going to rehuddle here. We're going to talk about the project. I took some notes before this. And September 20th, 2018, that was the day the Adobe news dropped. That's ah. when that's when it hit the air and we're like, wow, okay. Marketo is about to get acquired. So the only reason I'm saying that we can break into that later here, but oh, it's I'm, very just relevant. That, <laughs> I'm just saying like that was just about over three years ago now. So that's how long it's been since we've gotten back together. We're both of you are at different places. I'm still at the same place, but I'm happy to, to chat about the project, crack open uh, the doors, pull back the curtain on the Marketo project as a whole. And Let's kind of go through it. So let's do it. Go. All right. So first question, the way I like to structure this is like pre-project in the project and then post-project. So in the pre-project section, I've got a couple of questions. The first is, how did you know that it was time to rebrand? What were the key indicators that you're like, wow, we really need to think about this and actually do it? You know, I think, and Serge, I don't even remember, you may, if I talked to you about this during even your interview, but I, so it was a big part, honestly, of not why I was brought in, but it was one of the elements of that. Like the, the whole company was going through this, let's call it an upgrade. Let's call it a growing up or a maturation of the business where we had been really successful in SMB and we're starting to break a little bit more into the upper SMB space. And then we're really now starting to see the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, 20th enterprise customer come to light. But we were still struggling with conversations around security, with stability, like all the things that come with being a, a SaaS company that's actually trying to mature and grow up market. And so part of that, whenever Steve was interviewing me, was like, got a rebrand we've got it and then he would list 18 other things right that we've got to go do <laughs> but it was known to me I think it was one of my first things that I was like I've got to find our our agency we're going to partner with so it was out of the gate we knew that you know there's a lot of love associated with the Marketo brand but we would joke a lot of times it's sort of like it just felt more I don't want to say cartoonish but it kind of was like it was sort of intended to be a bit more accessible in that regard and the design and sort of the rounded edges and kind of how that all came to be it just sort of all <laughs> and with like the marquee mascot that we had yeah. all those things that were really fun and a cool part I mean we that lived on for sure but how we thought about that and how we were going to really convey within the identity within the mark itself even in the font we used going forward like what stability security uh, and that core really is that people can rely on. That was that was a big part of what we were trying to do in our sales motion as well as with our brand. So it was sort of like project day zero for both Serge when I hired him and, and myself when Steve hired me. So, but Serge, do you remember like? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was really exciting. I think we did. We spoke about it during the interview. Okay. You no, know, and you were still just brand new. And yeah, like day zero. So. Yeah. It was day zero and we were talking about, we were talking about agencies, partners, design aesthetic, how you were a, a dribble nerd and a font nerd, you know, and, 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 and that's how Focus Lab had come up, right? Yeah. And this, the, the, for me, it was really exciting to be able to join in on that journey, right? Where it was like, you know, high momentum, high growth enterprise uh, software company, you know, ready to take its step into its next chapter. And the belief was that it was going to be through creativity. Right. And so all of that work around the brand, right. You know, Sarah, as you mentioned, uh, the foundation that was being laid with the new leadership and the new, you know, infrastructure and the go-to-market motion and, you know, moving up market into the enterprise and, and to, to have the belief from yourself and from Steve and the CEO and everybody that, uh, you know, creativity was going to be, it was going to open the door to the next chapter of the company was yeah. really exciting. Yes, I, I just took a note there, which was day zero, because that stands out to me, meaning 
it was really, it was really nice and almost like invigorating in a way that when we were engaged then into the project, they all found us and selected us that you were all new as well. Newish, yeah. right? Like, I don't know how new, but seemingly pretty new. There was like a new wave of energy and faces in that company. And we were able to then come in and kind of like bolt onto that energy as some, as opposed to sometimes it's like, it's still the old guard. It doesn't mean the old guard's bad, but there's something to be gained off of that new energy. Oh, well, uh, for so sure. That was clear. Marketing was actually the last team that would, was, a, I would call it evolved inside of Marketo. And I was the last hire on the leadership team. So Steve had obviously gotten, you know, CFO in place, a, a new head of sales, all of those things. And then himself was the CMO for a year, which is part of what I'm sure we'll get to in our discussion, which made this project especially fun for a first time brand new CMO myself working with a CEO who had his own really strong opinion, obviously, about, about the, the identity of the company, which is great, but also made me super nervous because I had never gone through that process with him before to know how to coach y'all um, along the way. We were sort of learning together, which was probably fun with air quotes around it at certain points in time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, these, they're all a journey. Each one yeah. is unique, right? Like we're all you know, maybe the analogy is like, we're always on a train, but the train, sometimes the train is going up a hill. Sometimes the train is going like speeding down a hill. Sometimes it's like swerving all over the damn place, but we're always like, we're on a train. We at least know right. what we're driving to some degree, but it's, it's always unique. I got to say shout out to Steve. If, if, and when he does see this, it's always really nice as well to have a CEO that's completely on board. Yeah. Knows that it's he necessary was. by the, by the end of that ready. process. Was <laughs> in it. Yeah. Like he was bought in right? Like totally bought in. So that, that doesn't mean that's not a knock to the CEOs that are not bought in. It's just an extra cherry on the top that, you know, like, okay, this train is actually going to be moving really well down this track. Uh, Cause that's another element you have to kind of navigate when, when they're not. So well, we don't have to answer. I'll oh, go ahead, please, please. Just to come back to your point about the energy. I think, you know, Steve himself had such great energy and such great yes. business. Right. Yeah. The company was all starting to build that energy along with exactly. him, right? And, you know, I think back to your question around how do we know it was the right time? It was because the, the brand no longer matched the energy and the momentum that the Amen. company had. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see that a thousand percent. You could see the energy that came out of the resulting rebrand, even though some people would say, right, well, it's still purple. It's a different purple. Well, it's still the bars. It's just different bars. But when you, when you look at those things side by side, the energy factor. Oh yeah. Absolutely and just the movement. different. Like the, the way that, that y'all are incorporated movement into the brands was um, just, it reflected the personality of the business. And it's also why it, we may talk about this too, but it's why there was an option that was for a time, a really interesting way. I think you called it the bolt. For a while. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, honestly, now in reflection and hindsight, thank God that wasn't the one we went with, but it was a really interesting bring us all the way to this other place. And then we came back to center after that. But I, I actually, it was one of those things where Steve's energy actually matched that. And I wanted to see how far he would take it. And then we, anyway, so that was a, it was an interesting time because I actually knew he would really dig that and he did. And it was kind of like, this is telling us a whole lot about where we eventually landed. So anyway. yeah, when he was on at the point where he's like, I think this is the new logo. Even I was like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> like that's a huge departure. Like, I don't even know if I'm comfortable with that. It's an option. Right, we're like, we this should, is no longer like, an evolution. <laughs> right. We should, we should talk about it. Like what's good about it. And maybe we can, like you said, like come back right. to center. So, so still in this pre-project questioning, what were you looking for in a rebrand partner? So you don't have to now tell us all the things that Focus Lab is great at, but like when you were starting that adventure, like what were you looking for? So I think this is not going to be a great, robust and rigorous answer for you. But as you'll both know, I think we've talked about this before, Bill. I was, I would constantly go on to dribble and it was, it was for me, it wasn't an algo working on y'all's behalf. It was what kept standing out to me in terms of like B2B rebrands that were coming to life and some of the core elements of that. I kept not knowing it was y'all. I would be like, that's interesting when I would see, you know, see something. And then I dig in, I'm like, that's that same agency. I'm like, that's focus. And so then I'd like, it that would happen over a period of weeks where y'all just kept coming up. And so I had, I had put you on a short list of, of agencies that I was interested in. And then I started digging in and I, I kind of, I love just the scad roots of the company and like the smallness of it in many ways that were kind of like that all coming together for me was like, just 
perfect because that's the kind of partner I like working with is one that I, I felt like we're going to, of course, get attention and great partnership, but y'all had also done the outreach rebrand, which had also stood out to me when I was looking across the MarTech landscape, separate from like my dribble stalking, looking across the MarTech landscape, they were the ones that had done probably the most interesting brand work out of anybody in, in quite, you know, the last at least couple of years. And I loved the movement that you had designed into the brand. And I just thought it was so cool. So I was overly you know, visually stimulated in the process, but also landing it with a team that felt like, you know, a family type of partnership that we would have. That was the kind of team we were building at Marketo in the marketing org. And so it was kind of like, this is who we're going to work well with. I just sort of felt that. And I feel like we looked at only, I actually, Bill may have not known this in the process. I think we only looked at one other agency and I, I don't remember who it was, Serge. Sorry. I'm like, this <laughs> So that was, I mean, it was a, probably a, I don't know if that was a reckless way to make that decision, but I, Serge, I'm actually curious what y'all have gone through in your world or if you went straight in, but like, yeah, it's, that's how we, that's kind of how we made the call. But Sergio, do you remember other elements of it that I, I'm not remembering? Well, I had a very different perspective, right? So <laughs> my, my first, my first official work email was actually before I had even started was to review the Focus Lab SOW. Oh, <laughs> And, and right. you, you know, I came in playing hardball, you know, coming from the agency world, That's myself, right. right? where I was like, okay, I'm going to go through this thing and I'm going to look at, you know, what we're signing up for. You know, I'd seen the work, but certainly, you know, just, just coming from the agency world myself and also having the remit of like really thoroughly looking at the agencies that we were using as a company. Yeah. You, know, you guys were, were, were first up. But, you know, what I was really happy to see, just to, to Sarah's point, is that there were a lot of, you know, successful brands that you guys had, had partnered with. And, and you know, the, the outreach work was great. The frame IO work was great. There were oh, yeah. That, that were, you know, really inspiring to see. But I think what, what even... And I loved, by the way, the serverless work. That was like, I don't know. I just, it, I dug it so much. But anyway, that was... So that's good. Was. Like the X. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. That that like a counterculture, cool. like yes. uh, yes. the vibe of that thing is so good. It but is. what I would say on, on top of that, right, it wasn't just the design and the mark. It was in the case studies, it was the way that you guys sort of created brands to play with, right? It was this tactile process. You guys were, you know, cutting up things and 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 touching the brand. And, and when you did the brand launches, I think there was one of the brands that you'd worked with that you had created like all these shapes that kind of stuck together. And so, you know, it was really in a partner, what we saw was someone that was going to not only bring the brand to life from a design and visual standpoint, but also a tactile and, 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 you know, cultural standpoint that I thought was really great for the company. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Good old dribble days. Wow. Yes. It's, it's so crazy to think about you try to connect those dots, right? Like yes. one day I was like, Oh, I think I should get on dribble. And then you know, finally got an invite to dribble and I was a nobody. And I just started posting a lot and then the business grows and you post more and somebody like yourself happens to be on Dribble and says, like, look at that company. I guess I would just throw out before we go to the next section, just, yeah. I, I mean, the instincts and the trust, really, that it takes to say, here's this small shop, seemingly out of Savannah, Georgia, although they have people in other places. They seem to do good work. We're a pretty big company, and this is a really big project, but I'm going to trust them to do it. That goes a long way for us. We don't take that lightly. And that's why we lean in so hard into these projects to say like, we're going to work hard to do this work. We're going to try to stretch it and be tactile. We're going to go on the journey with you. Some of it's going to be hard. Some of it's going to be awesome. So just props to you both for trusting a small company like ours to, to deliver on the goods. Well, so it's, it's my random instincts that Sergio usually is like the actual barometer for whether it's good or not. <laughs> <laughs> We've had that that great relationship for a while, but he, yes, I think it was, it was just, it just felt right, you know, and I think sometimes you have to, you have to lean into that, especially as marketers, like we're not always yeah. making like quantitative decisions, it has to be that, so it, it was, and it was from the first meeting, I think we were like, this is, yeah, we're good. <laughs> we try to sell ourselves on that at this point, which is basically if you're going to, and now especially, this is three years removed, like we've all even yeah. grown up since then. If you're picking us or between a couple other companies at this point, we're all going to deliver great work, right? That is right. now table stakes. So you're not going to be saying like, whoa, there's a significantly better from a work perspective. So then it leaves like the people perspective. And I think at that point, what you're saying is like, you trusted your instinct of like, if we're going to go on this journey for six, eight months, I want to be working with people that I enjoy to be around because I, I know the work will be good. 
if I pick it, all three. So yeah. we, I would like to think we shine really well in that regard too, which is people factor. We, you know, back to the point about the size of the team and the agency and, and to your point, the, the people that we'd be working with, you know, Sarah, I remember that conversation of why we really liked that about Focus Lab, right? Yeah. That small team that was um, crafty and, and curious and creative, but also that, you know, you guys would lean in with us and that you guys would be on the journey with us and you would treat us, you know, like our work is as important for you guys as it was for us, right? Yeah. You know, as you said, there's a lot of partners out there that could do great work, but the work isn't just the product. The work is actually in that journey in walking a everyone thousand through percent. processes. Yes, yeah, yeah. very well the said. The world, you know, making him feel confident just like we were. I think that's, y'all played a yep. huge role in that for us. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if an agency can't deliver on that, e. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the outcomes of those things, right? Because that's some heavy lifting during a project. It's not just moving pixels around and writing great words, great. right? It really is the rest of that. All right. So in the project, we are now in the project. What was the most surprising aspect of the project to both of you? Can I, I mean, this is not like me selling y'all. I actually think that we delivered. And I actually think we were later delivering than we thought because of us. <laughs> but I think the fact that we got it done, was it, was it eight months? Was it, is that about, I don't remember, but. From, from beginning to end, yeah. uh, kickoff happened in January and then. Yeah, long that's right. That's happened. right. In October. Yeah. I, I think that for not, I, I shouldn't call that surprising, but I do think it was impressive. And I think the other thing that was surprising probably for me really was the 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 bolt option honestly like where that took us and where we went and how fun that was for like a week and then how nervous I got about that <laughs> and I you know I think Steve probably did too because at some point he I think backed off of that a little bit as well but I it was that was actually I was shocked that we went there but I think that was part of our journey so I think for for us it was a it was a really important element that actually took us down a certain part of the road we wouldn't have traveled and kind of needed to Serge what was it for you it, it, the first thing that comes to mind is Maverick. Right? Mm. <laughs> um, you know, the, the surprising part, so one, really just enjoyed the, the, the process of, you know, collaboratively kind of understanding what the attributes were and what the personality was going to become for the brand. And then to see that come back as a description that, you know, we didn't come up with it in the room, right? The, the, it was almost like our brand tarot card reading. And yes. that, the one that really stood out for us was Maverick, right? And it was like, it seemed to just capture the entirety of what we talked about. The, you know, the, 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 the punching up above our weight class as, as a company, you know, Steve's energy, the energy and the momentum of the company, but also that name followed us in different ways. Even, you know, dare I say, kind yeah. of, you know, the secret project word for us during you know, when we were being vetted as acquisition was Maverick, right? Because I don't we know just... if I remembered or connected those dots, Serge, but you're so right. It's really funny. <laughs> yeah. So it was, you know, it, it was like something that I didn't expect to see during the process that was just so telling for who we were as a team. Love that. Yeah. You never know what nuggets are going to come out of those exercises in any given one of them over eight months, right? You can never guess that, oh, one of the archetype exercise cards it's going to be a huge nugget or a random lightning bolt mark that is not going to be the final mark can actually take us on a journey to inform some more things to then reinform where we ended up. I'm uh, sorry, just I wanted wild. to say I liked that so much I went and bought the book. Ah! <laughs> well done, sir. Well done. All right. So that's surprising. Some people are going to watch this and think it's surprising that a project can actually take eight months. But Big projects take a lot of time. They take a lot, I mean, um, a lot longer than that in many cases, like especially one that impactful, yeah. What was the most challenging part of the project? I don't know, there's maybe a couple. I, I don't, I will say this. I was going through a lot as a first time CMO. And so there were so many things that sort of right before I had, so about five months in would have been a month, it'd been four months into our project or three or four months into our project together. And I remember being in my kitchen in Dallas before we had moved. And like, we were at this point where I could feel the indecision start to come in. So there's this like really peaks of excitement and we have a whole lot going on. 
And then it starts to level off and it's like, we have so much going on. The team's also distracted. So we weren't giving y'all as much time because we had all these other things happening. And I started to get nervous because I was like, I don't know if we, if we had like an arbitrary de- or whatever, but we knew, I think fall was when we were headed toward at that point. And I don't know if Steve had given me a deadline around that. I don't remember exactly. It was sort of that moment of, oh no, are we going to get there? Are we going to get stuck in the cycle of doom where we can't, cr- we can't get out of it. We can't have the light bulb moment that takes us back out. I think for me, that was just for like all the other things around it while also trying to manage all these other elements. And my first board meeting probably was right around that time. There's just so much going on that distracted me away from being able to be hands-on. And Serge was great, like driving the process start to finish. But without me being available that much, I think think there were probably challenges that came up from indecision just because I was feeling anxiety on other things. But Serge, I I would love... (laughs) That may not have certainly been the most challenging part for you. So, but Serge, yeah, what was the most challenging for you? Well, that that was funny, right? I mean, it was just, uh, it was like, we built up this campaign, this teaser, um, Marketober, right? So the entire month of September, we're promoting and people were wondering, oh, what is it going to be? And then this news drops like 10 days before. We're like, oh, it's definitely not that. No, um, and they, everybody thought it was the acquisition that we had been teasing. We're like, we would have never teased an acquisition. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's not, so that was also, yeah. But the funny thing was, so, so the hardest part I would say, and, and just hearing you speak, it, 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 this really was a, a, a shared journey, right? It was so fun to actually be in that same place where it was like, you know, I had started maybe a month or three weeks after you, you know, we had all of these big opportunities coming up with Summit and, and, and all of the other deliverables. I too was also moving to Denver, right? So it was like, but I think the biggest thing for me was everyone wanted something immediately right i mean we kicked off this project in january and summit was in actually in april right and so april that's right it was it was in april so and then and then in the middle of the project then you know steve was like oh you know what's going on with our website you know and so we've got to do it and so you know it was this this moment where it's like the brand is in transition. We need to hurry up and get to a new design system for our product UI. We need to hurry up and get to a new design system for this website because it's outdated. And so trying to, you know, use my purple, you know, magic crystal ball (laughs) to see where the brand was going to be heading and align everything to that moment was challenging, but also really exciting, right? Because that, that again, just back to the relationship, as the team continued to explore and create new things, it kept giving us building blocks that we could introduce in different ways throughout the process. There's such a, there's such a, like a natural tension that happens there, right? The challenging part from our side is, hey, we got this thing coming up. We, we're gonna start to use these building blocks. And our gut reaction is, no, no, no. Those building right. blocks are not secured yet. You right. might be building a house that's sideways, right? So we always want to say, no, wait, wait, wait. So there is this like natural tension that happens there. We navigated it, right? It's part of the journey, like yeah. we keep saying. One other thing too that I'm like thinking of, and Bill, you may remember, I think I sent y'all a telenovela, like the longest email I sent y'all was with my anxiety over the freaking PowerPoint presentation. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was like a 4 a.m. email. And it's, that email yes. was... It, it, long. it was long and it was, and it was, and I was, it was so funny to think back because I was so, I had such high anxiety about Serge was probably the, I think you were the, the only other person in marketing who knew behind the scenes, what was happening with the Adobe deal. And mm-hmm. I knew in July, I think that something was kind of starting to be discussed. Like I knew conversations were happening because I was having to get on planes and go speak to a million companies. That that starts to happen and Surge gets pulled in. And I remember it was it was just before that, maybe it was June that I kind of got wind of that. And I was like, that was around that time. And I'm like, guys, this is truly like the future of the company. Sadly, we're going to sit in rooms with a bunch of suits and like, they're going to determine, are we, are we worth 2 billion? Are we worth 5 billion? Are we worth 1 billion? Like the valuation of the business is sadly on a, like a pitch book. It's like, and the visuals actually matter, even though the people looking at them don't understand that. Like they would never cognitively say like, and, and intellectually like assess something and say, this is worth more because it looks better, but it, but it did. And it does. And I think for us, <laughs> it was such a huge part of, and we were, we had to start working with those tools and some of those blocks long before the brand rolled out and Serge did a beautiful job of kind of bridging that. But I, <laughs> that was probably the most stressful part for me, oddly, because of how and I, and I was trying to, trying to say it without saying it. So that's, it was like a 19 page email, but one for the record books. Uh, yeah, but yeah, for sure. 
Yeah. I, you know, you read an email like that and you're like, okay, there is some serious pressure here, knowing that meaning like you're feeling the pressure, you, yeah. Sarah, are feeling the yes. pressure. And it's like trying to read between the lines. Obviously, we can't decipher that. And exactly. Great job, right? You didn't say like, I need it to be this because of this. You just basically saying like, you can't understand how important this PowerPoint presentation is. <laughs> or like, well, sh shit, I guess we can't because that was a really <laughs> long email. It must be really important. <laughs> like, all right, we got to like, I guess we got to make this thing better. Like we're trying to still build the, the actual, the actual brand, larger yeah. brand. Right. But yeah. like, all right, I guess we're going to get into this PowerPoint thing. And like, we got to make it better y'all. Cause that was, that was an important email. Obviously she took a lot of time to write that. <laughs> and, like and we obviously know that the pressure is on your shoulders at that point, big rebrand. I, you know, I don't know all the behind the scenes stuff, but it was, it was clear you were in that moment. And I did write that down, which is, is like, there is this moment in a rebrand. You have this high, right? You're excited. You take off. You're like, yes, this is awesome. You start to see stuff. Yes, this is awesome. And then there's that strange period where you're like, oh shit, we got to like make decisions now. And I don't know right. that I'm ready to make decisions. Right. And I've already seen all the amazing stuff. So I'm kind of coming off of a high and now I'm settling into this. All right. Now we're like nitpicking colors and it's not maybe as exciting because you're seeing it for the fourth time, for the fifth time, for the sixth time. And there's a, a weird kind of chasm you got to get over there to get back to the excitement stage. Like, okay, We've made some decisions and I'm really happy with them. Now we can go back into the, right. like, yes, we're like, we're moving again. So I, that's how I read it as that pressure, that email was, is decision-making time. And there's a lot on the line. This pressure is now spilling over. Oh yeah. And y'all that's I mean, real. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure. And I guess the one other thing I bet was like legal review. And that's probably the thing that nobody talks about as being sexy. You know, that's yeah. not fun. I just remember it was such a long process because our, for what it was going to take us to do on our side um, and like us getting a clear answer from our legal counsel. I, if I had known that, that's one thing I would have probably gotten way ahead of a lot earlier in the process that we we just didn't realize how much longer that might take than what we thought. Yeah, there was four weeks, right? There was a, yes, there was a four least. week gap of like, okay, so Focus Lab is going to chill. It was four weeks later. It's like, okay, we're back on again. Good. The actual, it was three months, you know, after so. decision until we could actually do something with the mark, right? And, and I think that's the thing that I always bring up now for, for anyone going through these types of efforts is, you know, get ahead of that legal process, right? I mean, not for nothing. There's a check in the box for companies that are comfortable with going with just a logo type, just their name. Mm. They don't really, it's a lot easier to say, well, it's my name. And I can write it and I can swoop it just like other companies. It's a name. You can't take my name away. When you get to the mark in a silo, that's where you open up that giant can of worms. Yeah. Everybody wants a mark. Everybody wants a logo. So here we go. We go on that journey over and over again. So next question. And final, final question for in project. What was the most rewarding part of the project? Oh man, I think what was most rewarding about the project was just how excited everyone was about the effort. I think, you know, we had spent, and, and when I mean everyone, I mean the entire company at Marketo, the entire Marketing Nation community, our partners, people that, that knew that the effort was coming and knew that, you know, Marketo was on such a great track and had such a great tra trajectory when the work was finally delivered and when we finally launched that October in Marketober, you know, I can still go back and I can look on Twitter and you just see all of the, the posts that people had shared, you know, in front of the new logo, as the logo rolled out and, and, and the new colors rolled out to the offices around the world. We had teams in Australia and Sydney that were taking pictures in front of it. The team in Japan was really excited. You know, it was just, it was this, just, it became a global celebration once the work was completed. And I think that was really rewarding to feel like even, you know, if people weren't directly involved in the branding effort themselves, when it came to life, everyone was celebrating it and it became something that people were really proud of. Yeah. And I think I, I would plus one to that. I think the other thing for me just personally was the beauty of the brand launch video. I still like go back and watch it. Like it just makes me happy. Um, and it's like, it's like something that, that oddly lives on, you know, in this case, more than longer than the brand. I don't know, just because of the, of where we are now. I, I think the, um, 
it was kind of interesting too. I think part there was some chatter from those that had been a part of Marketo's past that had a lot to say. And I knew, and it was actually part of what we were trying to be really respectful of in the process. Like when we were thinking about evolution or revolution, like the it was an evolution with a hat tip to all the work people had done before without completely throwing that away and like reinventing something new. And, and frankly, the bolt would have been that, you know, I think we knew that and that was part of why we came back. But I think I, there, those that were a bit more neutral, I think in a good way, had a lot of, I think, positive things to say and understood that. Cause we were re I mean, I was, it was very precious to me that we didn't go too far. And I think that was, that was important, but still, so you're always going to have critics. Right. And they're oh, like bringing up sure. old logos from like 12 years prior saying like, Oh, this is our very first. And I'm like, Hey, we were just hat tipping to the origins of the company. I guess. Yeah. But it was, it was really, it felt something like we could be proud of and we could anchor on. And when you show your board something that they are like, yeah, that's really solid. Like you're bored. I mean, they've got a whole lot to say about a lot of things, but I think that was really, they understood the community. They actually understood what they had invested in, in many ways and understood the importance and the preciousness of that. So I think everybody understanding that and rallying around something that was that evolution was really special to see. Mm -hmm. I think the brand ended up walking the line really well. If you think about the core elements of the brand, if you want to dumb it down to a logo, it's very right. easy to bridge and connect the dots. But then if you go to the other side, you think about the, the event, rolling out the rollout video, that was like pretty intense in a great it was, way. And it was so great though. I love it. <laughs> it was so great. All right. So rewarding. I'm just going to take a minute here. This is not a commercial break. There's somebody we haven't mentioned yet that absolutely needs to be mentioned in this video, which is Marissa. Oh yeah. <laughs> the amount of effort and wrangling and coordinated and, and logistics and et cetera that she did during the project was epic. If she's watching, I'm sure she will watch. High five. She should. You, we both, I'm sure Serge does also miss her. I miss her more than, you know, it's like, I can't wait to work with her one day again. That's for sure. A plus, right? Like, and that's where I think we started to realize in these large projects, the importance of the different roles on the team, yeah. right? And someone has to play that bridge role so that the other people can be like, I'm just going to be the creative brain and give you creative feedback, but I don't have to schedule meetings and organize feedback cycles and all this other stuff. I think that was the first time that we realized like, oh, that's like a critical role. So critical for this and every other part of what we do, I mean, yeah. listen, she, without her, nothing happened. Like literally honest to God. <laughs> and the, and that's when, you know, that person is priceless when your leadership team all knows they couldn't survive without them. Just like I could, I mean, it's, it's equal in that regard. And I think, yeah, she was the one that made this project actually. I guess maybe I shouldn't be surprised that it got delivered when it did. Cause I, I mean, Marissa was a huge part of that. Someone's going to yeah. keep it on the rails. I would say, well, keep it on the rails, but keep it flying. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Marissa, you know, one of her superpowers, you know, outside of being tremendously organized is being very quick. Right. And in terms of, in fact, I remember there was an email, I think related to the project where someone comes back and says, Oh, Marissa, that was quick. And she, you know, took pride in that she was like real quick but that's that's yeah. you know, <laughs> their superpower is to help move things along and move the team along right in a really fast manner and I think because of that you know to Sarah's point we were able to deliver all of that great work I mean you know it th that's an entire brand transformation that's right across so many channels and, and when, you, when you think about the scope I mean we had 160 touch points that had to be updated for the brand, you know, to roll this thing out. And, you know, with her partnership and also Becky Wolf's partnership and several others, I mean, you know, it was, it was, you know, people like them that helped all of us get out of our kind of creative, you know, uh, um, spin cycle, right. And, and start delivering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And in another way allows you to stay in the spin cycle maybe some longer right. while they're doing the other stuff that needs to get done. You're not like, Oh, I got to respond to this email, but it's more logistic, but I'm still trying to figure out, I don't even know if we can go with this logo. I need you to stay focused on that thing while somebody right. else is handling the other things. Like all of those roles are so critical. Yeah. And we, we super recognized it during that part of the project and with Marissa specifically and shout out to Becky. All right. Post projects. So we're getting closer to the end here. Well, 
describe if you can what it was like to get acquired as you were literally trying to roll out the brand. So here was my perspective. We were like getting super close to the end, right? We, did, we were none the wiser. We had no idea. We were really close. Like now we're getting through legal. Y'all are like, okay, like we're going to launch. There's like a launch day. We're like making assets. And then I think we, Focus Live Team, sees like some news. It was like a leak, right? On a website somewhere. Hey, Adobe is considering acquiring Marketo. And we're like, what? What? <laughs> How the, how the hell do we not know that? Right. So I don't even know how it went, but I might've like messaged either Sergio or Marissa, like, or, or Sarah, Hey, what's the deal with this thing? Is this real? And it was like, crickets. I don't know. It was, it was something like crickets. Yeah. Like obviously y'all could not respond to that. And I'm like, nah, that cannot be real. That, I don't know. We would have some scent of that. Uh, so what was that like on your side? Yeah, your sense of that was the 4 a.m. email. Uh, but yeah, there, you know, we had pings going back, flying back and forth on stuff. And Mar Marissa got brought under the tent, I think, in the in kind of final weeks as we were going through cycles on things also. So it was, I think that we were the only three that were really in the loop. It was weird. I will say that it was weird. It was a little bit surreal. I think just the fact that that was happening, it, it, it was timeline wise of when that sale happened to Adobe was. A, a big surprise. It was not intended to happen that fast. Like the company wasn't planning oh. to exit that fast. It was kind of the market momentum just sort of propelled us toward conversations. And I think the competitive dynamic of, of investments that the Adobe's of the world really decided and were needing to decide urgently if they wanted to make or not, it was just coming to a head. And so it was just the right time. And so our owners decided it was the right time. But I had been on the road for three, I mean, it was, it was probably, maybe it was two months to three months, but like we were always just at Stanford Park Hotel and doing, you know, meeting after meeting and, and, you know, meeting some really interesting, fascinating people, but like not where I need to be spending my time while we're finalizing some of this stuff. And I think we, we had our first, before I think that was announced, Serge, did we, I think this, I think there was a meeting where we got introduced, maybe, did that happen before the 20th or maybe it was after, I'm not sure, probably after, but we were just getting, we were getting to meet some of that team and we shared, oh yeah, by the way. I think I did this on purpose. I was just like, we've got a brand that's launching on X date. Like not that long from now. Yeah. And, oh. but it's a statement. They hadn't actually officially acquired us yet. And the deal wasn't getting signed until I think it was November. Mm -hmm. So you're, we're legally obligated all to operate as business as usual. And so there wasn't really, it, if, knowing that that was our plan and us knowing and having documented that that was our plan would have been operating not as business as usual to have changed that or to pull it back or to do anything yeah. differently until we got through that process. And so we were honestly just following what the letter of the law was in, in that, and that, you know, allowed us, I think, to continue forward, but also we really needed to do it. Like we, what we didn't want to do was all of a sudden have this old identity showing up and it, it, it still did. Right. We, but we caught probably 80% of it because we were able to launch, frankly, but still, even in that announcement day, I remember like the, the big glowing old logo is what probably yes. was coming up, right? Because yes. we hadn't launched it yet. And then I remember like when we switched, when it became the new one, it was like, oh my God, it looks so much better. And it was just like a thing of beauty. It actually went well, yes. it complemented Adobe's brand so much more than the old logo did. Those look like awkward separate companies. It actually looked like we were coming together more because of the harder edge of the more sophisticated brand and like. All of that to me was great reasoning for just why we would have wanted to do that anyway. But timing, although it seemed like it wasn't on our side, it actually was. And in, in when we had planned to roll it out a month later, we would have probably not, honestly, like if we would have been, a, if it would have taken us a month more on legal, I'm not sure we would have been in a position to do that, but I think it really served us well and it fit in. And it was almost like the, I think it was the best part of Adobe, <laughs> Adobe experiences cloud identity, but it also, again, it mapped really nicely with Magento, like Yes. It just fit better with all yeah. the other parts of the brand uh, family in Adobe. So I think it was actually something that worked out really well. But Serge, what was your perspective? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think, um, so going back, just thinking about it here in real time, I mean, you know, to, to come into the company and to Marketo thinking, hey, you know, creativity was going to be the, the new frontier, right? That's going to help open up new doors. And then actually to see that pay off, right, where, you know, we're talking about the presentation, you know, and, and the, the presentation of, of making, making the company seem like it's been through this transformation, right? I, I tell people all the time, I'm like, hey, 
you know, I've spent a lot of time in, in, in my career in creative building platforms and building campaigns, but the most profitable piece of creative I've ever done that we've ever done is a PowerPoint deck, right? Wow. <laughs> um, and so it was really exciting, right? It was really exciting for, you know, to be a part of that team and, and sort of help use creativity to help that process. But I think, you know, at the time of, okay, this acquisition is now becoming real to your point, Sarah, and we had that conversation too. I mean, these branding efforts are not cheap, right? There's a significant right. investment made by a company to go through this process. And then an even more significant investment to launch it, right? Because the, the transformation, the updating. And so, you know, it's just, it would be very disruptive in that process to not follow through, right? It's, it's almost sort of damaging in a way. But that maverick nature also came out during that process where it was like, hey, this train is moving, right? We're 10 days out from this. And I remember I went to lunch and I got a call saying, hey, can you hop on a, you know, this call in 45 minutes and do the whole brand pitch? And, and, and it was exciting, right? I mean, it was high intensity, but high energy. And it was, it was met with great excitement by the Adobe team as well. Right. We were really excited to see that the brand was going to be, be evolving. And, you know, they made the same comments that Sarah did, that it does fit better into, you know, the overall Adobe brand portfolio, you know, with that, with the sharper edges, with the bolder colors, with the more sophisticated type and the, all, the, the entire digital experience. And in fact, it also helped lay the foundation for many other digital experiences that did come from Adobe yeah. afterwards. That's right. right. Well, I think also, if you think, I, I, I actually not sure how many people in, in the in the real world would have known the difference on whether or not Adobe itself had decided to do this and just had magically, you know, and maybe Adobe would have the ability to do something like that in three weeks, I don't know, because it's right. uniquely Adobe. But the, a lot of people thought that rebrand was actually a part of the acquisition. It was just kind of a funny thing, like that they were gonna, they were doing that just to like streamline it in. And it again, it fits so beautifully. We didn't we didn't know it. None of us planned for that, and it just did. And so I think that was that was really cool to see and, and be a part of. But we were those first that first week we were nervous, and I was more nervous to have to tell Sergio I'm nervous. Show <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, no fear. Yeah, right. it's like that was wild for us to experience because we're on, you know, we're there to support you ultimately and we're servicing you in whatever way we can. But there's one part of us that are like, I don't know, is this whole entire thing just going to get backed up into like a ditch and just going to like, just get thrown over a cliff there. Cause they don't, they don't need it anymore. So honestly, like I was surprised that it even, it hit the streets because yeah. I kind of suspected it would just ultimately kind of get thrown away because it would ultimately change at some point, but it was really nice to see it all the way through. Like, mm -hmm. wow. It's like those two worlds collided at literally the same exact time. Yeah. Like the rollout was like the next week mm -hmm. and all my team's looking at me going like, so what's going to happen? I'm like, I don't know nothing, man. I literally don't. We're going to also proceed as normal. It launches in a week. We're supposed to ship all this stuff. We're going to ship it. And I yep. absolutely agree. Like if you look at those things side by side, I just drummed some of this up yesterday because I was yeah. making social assets for this episode. Those two marks could literally not look better together. Yeah. It is they as really if couldn't. they are made for each other. It was almost like the A was like spinning. Like it was almost like it was perfect. It was just like its story. It's like Adobe's story of growth. Like, yeah. I don't know. They were just beautiful yeah. together. <laughs> well, it was like that market has progression, right? From, from left to right. And with these, it was the, the angular shapes of the doors. And then as it got to the Adobe logo, it just looks like they, they started to turn yeah. and then form like, yeah. So it, it it's, was it's the like same fun. width, the same yeah. sharpness. It was literally the same exact. So that was, that was a pretty cool victory. There Maybe y'all knew something and you weren't telling us. Oh, <laughs> never know. By your track record. <laughs> so, so without going long here, let's see what questions we want to tackle. I think this one's probably better. So what, what would you have done differently knowing everything that you know now? Hmm. Besides not hiring focus lab, that's not an acceptable answer. For yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's, it's a, it's such an interesting question. What would we have done differently? I, I honestly, probably the legal thing, like just getting ahead of that earlier, um, because it wouldn't have even, honestly, if we had done that, if we had known to do that, I just, I had never led a rebrand like that. Like I just hadn't, you know, <laughs> and, and I think appreciating the timeline dependencies. And I think y'all, I mean, y'all were 
actually pretty transparent with us about that. We just we didn't know how that would work also with our ownership environment because you know we were in a private equity firm and so what is their legal opinion have to do with it like we just didn't know and and that was new to everybody and i think it would have put us in a different position timeline wise it might have been a little nicer because it probably would have hit in you know august versus or september versus like still we could have never planned for what happened obviously in september and october but it might have us getting like a month shaved off of that process might have helped us and i i also I don't know what we would have done differently at this stage either, but I'm always like a plan B, plan C person. I was really nervous about that. Not, I was like, if this falls through, we've got to start over from scratch. And I don't know, those poor guys at Focus Lab are going to be so exhausted. They're not going to want to do this with us, (laughs) you know? And so I think, I don't even know if it's like a plan B, but I was, I was really nervous for that because I didn't know what that meant for us to start over. And so again, it all comes back to kind of the legal process and getting your ducks in a row with that. Yeah, I, I think I, I agree, right? I think the the biggest learning was certainly in the legal process. And I think if we would have had, it, it's not so much doing different, but it is, it is the thing that I, I, I feel like we missed out on. We left a lot on the table right because of the timing so if we had a month you know i think there were things like being able to tell the story of the brand process much more right that we weren't able to do given that's right of things we had the draft mock-ups of and the logo rights for the building the naming oh my god i forgot about that don't remind me of that sergio (laughs) we would drive by the denver skyline you know every you know on a daily basis and just anticipate when the logo was going to be up in the denver skyline and you know we never got to launch that and so you know i think it had we had more time we would have been able to execute against all the things that we did have planned for the brand reveal And so it's almost like, you know, we had intended to go to Mars. We were only able to land on the moon. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) Well said. Well said. Yeah, I think. And the takeaway there is ultimately planning. Mm -hmm. We try to do our best now, especially with additional learnings from our side, to even start telling our our partners, like, you know, you got to start planning for brand rollout, like literally before you see your first design. True. Because it is such a big lift, the auditing that you're going to need to do on all the things you're going to have to change. Don't wait until you love the logo and you're a month and a half away from launch to be like, oh, shit, now I got to focus over here. Like start planning for that literally right now. My final question, and then we'll end for people that, and this is, could be similar, but try to take a different path on the answer. For people that are entering into a rebrand, what words of advice would you give them from anything that we just discussed or different? Be clear about your goals. Like, I think that's at least have a really strong point of conviction going into what you're trying to accomplish. I think out of the gate and, and being as communicative as you can be, I guess, with the context for partnering with y'all, because you need all of that context. I mean, I think for us, we just, that first workshop we did on brand archetype was so powerful, but I think we still knew we were, we wanted to grow up as a brand. And I, and I don't think really knew necessarily what that looked like going into it. And that's okay. Cause the creative process produced that for us. I and mean, we didn't know how far we did or didn't want to take it, but we did know that we needed to really become an enterprise trustworthy brand. And I think that was for us, it helped anchor on so many things coming back to center at the end of the day, it really, I, I think, and I don't know that we did probably didn't do that in the most organized manner, but thankfully, thankfully for people like Marissa, we were able to bring things back to center, maybe even if we went off the rails for a minute. So that's mine. Yeah, for me, I, I would tell people plan to bring people on the journey with you. Yeah, this is it's a it is a it's going to be an iterative process, right? And you know, I think if people have the expectation that they're going to arrive at a final product and show people for the first time and it's going to go smoothly then they would be mistaken right they you know it's all about walking people through the process of understanding why you need a brand rebrand or a rebrand or a brand evolution what are the decisions that are being made going into the elements of the rebrand and then ultimately you know back to Sarah's point, what are the goals? What are the expected outcomes? You know, because w- what I've come to, to understand is that even though the core team might fully understand why it's time for a, a change in brand or an evolution of brand, it takes a while for other t- 
team members, yeah. and your customers to get there, right? And so include people in on that journey and it'll be much more successful. Yeah, well said. And, and a very intentional including people, right? Not every deliverable you get, it's like, hey, I need everybody to vote on it. That's one way of including people that is has error in it. But there is the like very intentional, strategic, hey, we're going to show you these things at this point. We're going to keep you as a part of the journey. That is maybe the 10,000 foot view. And we're going to live on the 1,000 foot view and do all the minutia and bring it up to your level as we need to. Just there really quick. One, you know, it's not designed by committee, right? But it is about getting people invested in the work with you, right? And so plan to get people invested with you and you will be much successful in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. You're a thousand percent right. Like you don't, there's no surprise. There shouldn't be surprises, but that's very different than designed by committee, right? Those are two, depending on how you say it, they're the same thing. But if you say it the right way, they're actually wildly different. It was awesome to connect with you both. Yes, you too. I don't know. I don't know when and how we'll do this again, but super appreciate you both for the time that I had with you then, the time I have with you now. And I don't know, hopefully we cross paths soon. Some crazy conference, some B2B, sure we will. tech, shindig. <laughs>